with the FCA Renault merger basically a done deal, you got to start wondering who's going to be the biggest loser because you know these mergers, people lose their jobs, their homes, their businesses. Lots of impact happens. So I'm going to talk about four of the biggest losers I see today. And then you guys can tell me at the end of the video in the comments below what you think. And we're going to get started right now. Hello, it's Tim Estradal, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and my passion is trucks and SUVs. If that's your passion too, hit subscribe below, hit both case to be notified new videos put out, like, well, this one. So the news is that FCA and Renault are going to merge. I did a video on this a while ago. I'll link that above. Ta-da. And in this merger, it's supposed to save them four or $5 billion. It's going to create a company that's worth, I had numbers here, $40 billion, 8.7 million vehicles, be the third largest automaker. And if you include Nissan and Mitsubishi, it'll be the world's largest automaker. We're number one. So the uh, the news is that there will be no job losses. That was any announcement, no job losses. We all know that's a steaming pile of beep. Yep, that's what we're calling it. So it makes me wonder, though, if there's going to be no job losses and everything's rosy, why even merger? That That's kind of the question to me. They're talking about they're going to share parts. They're going to share R&D, and they're going to get, FCA is going to get access to more markets, and we know maybe making access to the United States. That all sounds great, but there's going to be losers here. Let's talk about the biggest one. So the biggest one is clearly Nissan. Yeah, Nissan. If Nissan doesn't get involved in this merger, uh, wow, it's not looking rosy over there. And if you haven't caught the news on Nissan lately, they have really having some problems. So uh, there's a PR kind of way to say this story. Uh, and then there's a fun way to say it. So Sahaka, who is the new CEO of Nissan, and I just said that the best I could say that, uh, basically what happened a couple months ago was, well, he, he insulated or he framed um, or he uh, unraveled some misgoings or some misdeeds and, and misgivings by Carlos Ghosn. Carlos Ghosn was the head of the Nissan Renault Alliance, and basically the big board chairman. And I flew back to Japan, and he got arrested. He's been in Japan jail ever since. And Japan jail is not like U.S. jail. You get out, you got to like go over, and you try to get out again, and you, you can't. You have to, you know, get house arrest. And he's been fighting for getting out of jail, and he's calling these guys liars, and they're calling him liars, and it's this whole thing. And so what's happened is that let's go back a little bit. Gon was really pushing for Nissan to become more integrated in the alliance, become a better partner with Renault, bring Mitsubishi in, and create a tighter alliance. And he wanted um, more control for Renault and more control for everybody to get along. That's what he's trying to do, everybody get along. Sakawa walks in and he says, no, 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 no. Japan first. All about Japan. And we believe we're a strong enough company and we don't need the alliances. We don't want to be that involved in Renault. We'll do our own thing because we're Japan first. Well, I've been to Japan, and I can kind of see that. It's a very naturalistic society. They're very much in the Japanese culture. Not a bad thing. just happens to be the way it is. And so he unravels all the stuff that Gon had done. So God was, unravels all the stuff, and there's like loans and personal loans, which is all this stuff, which doesn't make any sense. Gon made millions of dollars as CEO, but eh, regardless. So Gon goes in jail. Bink! So God takes over. He gets really icy with, with no... The conversations are icy... Uh, the alliance is kind of on the edge, and uh, it actually was a, one of the French guys was quoted in the paper of saying that they can't even talk to their Japanese counterparts right now because they're so bonkers. Well, lots going on. So, Gon goes in jail. Sakawa takes over. I see relationship. Jose Munez, who is the head of U.S. sales, tsk, later he went to Hyundai. The uh, his underling, tsk, see ya. He left. Uh, one of their head of PR people I know left tsk, later. Um, the, yeah, so the executives of Nissan brain drain are leaving. There's a bunch of talent loss. They lost 45% of the profit in the first quarter. Sales are down. Things aren't looking good at all. Mitsubishi still around, but Mitsubishi's, well, at this point, they're kind of on life support, right? Nobody really buys them anymore. So Nissan could go from like number two, three in the world with all the alliance and everything down to 
Nada. And, you know, the, the marriage was supposed to be a good one. Renault has cars. Nissan's building more trucks. The profit was good. They're going to share some technologies. That never happened. Renault saved Nissan a couple days, decades ago, and now Sanara later. So I don't see Nissan being part of the alliance. So they're going to be the first biggest loser because if they lose that alliance, there's bigger, big ramifications to that company. They're going to shrink quickly. Okay, who's the second biggest loser? Well, it's got to be the American worker, right? He gets screwed in this deal. Well, kind of a guess, and that's what my friend John McElroy wrote today. He has a story on Ward's Auto. He also does Auto Line as well. And he was talking about how in this merger of transformative merger and merger vehicles, when you really boil it down to, they're going to share R&D, they're going to share parts, and they're going to share um, some engineering and you know payroll. So if you look at head, head, uh, human resources, you look at payroll, you look at engineering, those things can be shared across a large company. And so his point is, if you're going to merge, why not merge those offices and merge those operations to be more efficient, which is what all stakeholders want, like uh, uh, stockholders, stakeholders, take the same deal. Uh, so if you merge those offices, you're going to get savings, which is going to boost the bottom line. And so that's the idea of the merger. So who's going to lose in this? Well, the agreement says that France gets a seat on the board. Italy's claiming a big win because they're going to get more voting share than they had before. And so if you take those two pieces, France and Italy aren't going to lose jobs. They've been assured of this. They've been, it's in the merger details. Where's North American worker? He's not in those details at all. So he could easily lose their job. And I don't know why it wouldn't happen. It makes total sense to me that they're in Michigan, that some engineers, human resources, some product planners possibly lose their jobs. It's just going to be a trickulation. They could probably just say, we're not laying anybody off, but we're also not hiring either. And we're not filling positions that are open because that makes sense. There's also news today that the headquarters for Fiat Chrysler and Renault will be in France. So let me get to that. That's the third biggest loser. Third biggest loser is Michigan in all this. Michigan's going to lose out by not having a corporate headquarters there in Michigan because corporate headquarters do a lot of charity around the area and they do have a lot of employees in the area and they have a lot of businesses that are the byproduct of that, bit of that headquarters being there that grow. For example, uh, restaurants, uh, grocery stores, shopping centers, uh, real estate, uh, dry cleaners, those are all, and haircut and gyms, those are all personal businesses, or preferably businesses that focus off the main business, right? And so if you lose headquarters and you pull people away from headquarters and you go ahead and move headquarters elsewhere, you got to change things up. Things have to change. It's going to change. There's, there's just no doubt about it. And so the third biggest loser, like I said, is going to be Michigan. They're going to lose tax dollars. They're going to lose uh, revenue. They're going to lose um, employees. They're going to lose a lot of status. Because if you're not making decisions there in Michigan, you're making them elsewhere. You know, look at Toyota. Toyota makes global decisions in Tokyo or a, a Toyota City that impact North America. Well, there's an ongoing thing with North America trying to get more autonomy. Well, same thing's going to happen eventually here too. So that's the third biggest loser. And finally, the fourth biggest loser are going to be some iconic brands. So Chrysler's dead. Sorry, my puteer, it's dead. There's no way, in my view, that Chrysler survives this. They've been through so many mergers. Their product lineup now is at, what, one car? Yeah, uh, two cars, excuse me, the 300 and the uh, Pacifica. Those go away. That, that's just dead. Um, you know, that brand's got to go elsewhere. It's probably become a Dodge. There's conversations that John McElroy talked about where Dodge goes away. I don't see Dodge going away directly, but I definitely see Jeep and Ram taking off and being bigger players. Jeep is gonna be kind of a loser as well, as far as a brand, because they're gonna share technology with Renault's SUVs. And so they're gonna lose some of their ingenuity that they've and their brand, you know, the, the way they design the cars and their engineering worldwide, because they're gonna share a platform with the French. And they're gonna use that platform in other vehicles. So they're gonna basically have another competitor. It's not good for Jeep. Uh, Ram's going to be a big, big winner here because they're going to go more global because they'll get more markets and they may help develop the mid-sized truck I talked about last video, that Renault Alaskan, that could be a Ram truck. And so those are going to be clear losers in this. Uh, Renault is going to have a lot of wins because Renault is going to get a lot of new technology. 
a lot of new engineering, a lot of new platforms they can use on their older products. Fiat gets the same thing. Fiat gets new new vehicles. They need stat. They're, Fiat's like based their entire world on the 500. And so if they had access to more vehicles and more from Renault, they could do more stuff. And also the Renault Zoe subcompact small electric car, that's a big win. That could be a straight competitor of Nissan Leaf and Toyota Prius. And so you're going to have uh, benefits there for FCA to meet emissions. You're going to benefits there for Fiat to meet emissions. You get benefits for Renault for new technology. And there is some question about Renault coming back to the United States. It would help with market share. Uh, they have a couple smaller brands that would help it sell. Um, Dacia, I'm, Dacia, I may say that wrong, but they have a couple smaller brands that could be entry-level brands that could sell pretty well here. So they, Renault's going to be a winner. So there you go. There's my biggest losers from this merger. And clearly the merger is going to make some benefits. But that's the biggest losers. I see North America losing in this. I see North American automakers losing, as auto workers losing in this, especially engineers, designers. That It's a big hit for them. But the flip side of this is if they don't merge, how much longer does the FCA last just living off the Ram and Jeep names? You know, they, they've done really well with profit-wise last couple months and last year, but they definitely need another partner. They got to have some small cars. They have some EVs. That's just the way the market is. You got to have EVs and you got to have pickups. That's what makes the world go. So, hey, uh, comment below. Let me know what your biggest losers are, what your biggest winners. What do you see coming out of this? Do you see Chrysler living? Do you see Dodge dying? Do you see it all being rosy? Do you have a, a fantastic view that um, I'm clearly missing? And uh, make sure you follow us on PickupTruckTalk.com, PickupTruckTalk, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.